Hello, everyone. This is Mike, and on behalf of Mark Horseman and myself, welcome back to Manager Tools. Now, we've talked about thank you notes probably a hundred times. Unfortunately, they are fast becoming a nearly lost art, and that's too bad because they're always appreciated. We know too many managers and professionals who keep them for years. You know, Mark often tells me about the basket of thank you cards underneath his desk that he keeps. And when he's feeling particularly low, he pulls out that, that basket and reads through those thank you cards. Now, that's how much it means to folks. Now, we consider thank you notes a part of every manager's career and management toolkit. And today, we're going to talk about how to write them. actually referred to thank you notes as the saffron of relationships. Saffron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't cook. Yes, I, I am. Yeah, yeah, I know. Saffron is like the most valued of all spices. I, I think it's still the most expensive by weight. Um, and thank you cards don't weigh very much, but they sure mean a lot to the recipient. Um, yeah. Plus, almost nobody uses saffron very much anymore. So it's a metaphor that's sort of arresting for me. Folks remember it. Yeah, every time you said, I go what? Saffron. Yeah, oh, yeah, saffron. Yeah, <laughs> saffron. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, and you're and you're right. I, I should remember thank you notes. That's for sure. And um, like many of us, I don't write them nearly enough. But the ones I get, even if I know they're coming, are still wonderful. Yeah, I feel the same. I don't write them nearly often enough. I've got three or four in my head that I've got to write. Um, but as but as somebody who talks about them and encourages them all the time to everybody I can get my hands on. Um, I feel bad when I don't write them as often as I should. Um, but even when I'm focusing, even when I'm coaching folks on them, um, and it's obvious they're going to send me one, like people say, could you please send me your address? Um, I still love them just like you. Uh, and frankly, keep them. Yeah. It's not one of these things that is only good if it surprises somebody. I think sometimes people think that, but, um, they feel good even when you're not yeah, surprised. E- e- even when you're not surprised. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, I got a feeling this is going to be a, a fairly short cast, so maybe we ought to stop talking about them and let our wonderful community of listeners uh, find out how to how to do them. Yeah, I I, I kind of thought it'd be short too, but it may not be all that short. I, I we, you know me, blah blah blah, um, <laughs> <laughs> blah 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 blah, <laughs> soapbox man. Okay, so look, we're going to talk about three things: about materials that you're going to use. So we got some general guidance, and then we'll talk specifically about the content, exactly how to write a thank you note. Um, well, let's go over. Materials should be good, right? There are two things about materials. Store bought is completely fine, but and, and number two, an upgrade really is very much worth it. The, our general guidelines are: one only says thank you twice, although that's a change actually from etiquette history. Uh, one never asks a question or requests a favor in a thank you note. It is never too late to write a thank you note, and handwritten is still best. Uh, And then when we get to content, we've got five comments, which is, it's three paragraphs long. Paragraph one is one sentence long, in which you specifically say thank you. Paragraph two is two sentences, which personalize the note. Paragraph three restates your appreciation. And our fifth point is, you can do better than this narrow formula. But we provide the formula to get people off of the dime. Okay, so let's talk about store-bought. Uh, you're saying it's okay to go down to, to the grocery store and buy a pack of eight of those cheap cards with a script thank you on the front and send those? I mean, surely not. I, I really am. I re- really am. <laughs> uh, well, well, well aren't, aren't there times when you really need to send something special to someone? Like, uh, you, you want to impress somebody with your thank you note. Yeah, uh, arguably, yeah, that that's true. But but l- l- let me let me put a little bit different spin on it, Mike. Um, in my experience, the question is not which card to send. In other words, some we're suggesting here that someone actually has both personalized stationery and then some store bought stuff and has to decide which one to send. That just doesn't happen, and people aren't making that choice. Some people have nice stuff, some don't. I don't make a huge distinction. I think we were talking about earlier, right? Neither you nor I make a huge distinction between the ones I get in terms of how pretty they are, right? 
Yeah, never. Right, right, we don't. So I just don't think the decision point is whether or not you really should have your own personalized or corporate stationery. I think the bigger issue is that folks aren't writing thank you notes because they don't have the right materials, and that's a shame. And the right materials are literally anything that you can write a thank you note on. I mean, worst case, you could write it on a, on you know, a piece of scratch paper. But but store bought notes are completely fine. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Usually the decision is. Not what kind of how you're going to write or what kind of material you're going to use, but more whether you're going to send it or not. And it would be a shame for folks not to send it because they don't have an expensive thank you card or something. Yeah, like that. And, and I want to mention yeah. one other thing too. The, 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 um, we are going to we we do have in our set of interview casts how to write a thank you note for an interview, which is a slightly different, slightly different than the than our recommendations here, but only slightly. Um, but let's take an example of somebody who says, well, gosh, I don't know. I, I don't know whether I should even write a thank you note at all because I'm sure some of the other people who are interviewing, they have personalized stationery. That, that, again, that's not the issue. The issue is if you don't have it, should you go buy store-bought? Yes, absolutely. If I get five thank you notes and four of them are a nice stationery and one is store-bought, I, I would much rather have a sharp, well-written one, which will provide you the template for rather than one that's on store bot. So the question is not relatively which one looks better. The question is to do or not to do. And it's not right. a reason not to do it, to not go to the store. Simple as that. Right. Right. Yeah. Are, are there any, ex- are there any exceptions to this rule? Um, yeah, but I think it's a pretty subtle one. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I guess and it's, if you're an executive, you not having nice stuff is just dumb. Yeah, I'm not saying that if you don't, you shouldn't go to the store, because if you don't have nice stuff, go to the darn store, buy some thank you notes and send them. Um, uh, But most executives can get their company to spring for it or they can afford it themselves. If the company won't make it simply personal stationery, you know, don't go out to your stationer and get your company's logo or your company's stuff put on your own stationery. You can't do that. That's inappropriate. Um, But just simply make it personal stationery. So that leads us to the the topic of upgrades. Right, right. Um, there really are some very clear rules about stationery, uh, which no one seems to know anymore, and which this <laughs> discussion falls into. And we don't really have time for it in any great detail, but I'll, but I'll give you a few thoughts on this. If your company has something that you believe would serve as a nice thank you note, with your name or your company name on it, it's probably fine 99% of the time. Okay, we're certainly not against folks having stationery with their name on it for use for home, separate from corporate stationery, whether the corporate stationery has your name on it and the logo or just the logo doesn't matter. We're essentially making professional recommendations here. Um, If your company has stationery for you, um, here are some thoughts. First, use what the company provides, right? That's not hard. It doesn't have to have your name on it, okay? You don't need to go out and get your own. Uh, you don't need stationery with your name on it. It's nice but unnecessary. Um, someone once told me that, that CEO should have it, and my response was, yeah, maybe. They'd certainly have the budget. Uh, but if the CEO sends a note with a company name on it, that's pretty cool because she speaks for the whole company. In fact, that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. People know it's from the CEO or the chairman or what have you. So second point, ideally use thank you cards as thank you cards. Um, that, in other words, if you have some company logoed or named stuff already, but it's just notepads or letterhead, ask what's available. Um, thank you notes are usually about five high by seven wide, sometimes five and a half or six by eight. Um, either they come with a fold over or a single flat card. They're made out of card stock, which is to say 80 pound uh, uh, paper at a minimum. We recommend a hundred pound. The foldovers have a name or logo on the front, and when they're actually opened, they're they're ten high, about by seven wide. I, I love those because you get a lot more room. You can get a whole lot on the card. Yeah, yeah. kind of double. No, no, no. Sorry, nice, uh, nice. Thank you for playing the straight man. Uh, um, but no, um, you're only supposed to write below the fold. If you're writing an old friend, yes, you can write a long note. But generally, you're you're supposed to address the person below the fold. Uh, but then you got the back though. To read yeah, the Yes, one hopes one can think about what one is writing, um, and, and uh, as the old saying go, old saying uh, goes, uh, I would have written you a shorter note had I more time. Um, no, you should think about what you're writing and try to confine it to the front. And every once in a while, you're going to run over, and that's probably okay, Mike. Um, but um, the reason they're for they're they're folded over is so that you can 
maintain privacy with the note if someone chooses to do so when they open their mail. In other words, they're not reading the mail as soon as they're opening the envelope. Um, and this, it's the same reason that letters are folded over. So once you open the mail, somebody can actually open your mail for you and the note can remain folded and therefore personal. Um, yeah. I, so I could go on here, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could. I, if you'd like, I will. <laughs> to the to, to the moans and groans of thousands of listeners. Um, like the fold over fold over cards have a name or logo on the front, uh, and the flat cards are like five high by seven wide and have the logo or name right on the top, right above where you write. Some like the the card uh, because it's easier, and that's fine. Um, the card can also be just be paper clipped to something, so you can write a note on on that. Some people use them as 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 uh, distribution notes, I, I would not. It's a very expensive distribution note, but some people do. Um, yes, you can use what in America we would call an executive note. And an executive note in terms of size is basically a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper, which is cut in half horizontally, and then it's turned 90 degrees. So the eight and a half side is now the height, and it's five, five and a half inches wide. Um, yeah, and, it, and a little hint for folks, when you do that, um, if you fold the paper the eight and a half eleven by in half and then crease it before you tear it, it'll make oh. a much neater, <laughs> no. neater line. You're killing me, partner. No, the one one would one would not tear a sheet of paper in half in order to make an executive note. Nor would one send a thank you note on a piece of torn paper. Taking it further, what about those tear sheets which people are given? A lot of people in in uh, uh, particularly high tech companies are given something with a logo on the top or with their name on the top, and they're gummed at the top, which allows you to tear a piece. Off. Those are nice as note sheets. They are not executive notes, um, or, or they were if they're the same size until someone ruined them by gumming things up on the top. Although I like notes like that. I, I'm, I'm, it just it, and it is still stationary. It's just not thank you note stationary. Uh, can you write a thank you note on them? Sure, because we're telling you to go to the store and buy store bought notes. The real key to stationary is the note you have should have a matching envelope. So fold-over mm. cards or uh, note cards, card stock, you always buy an envelope that fits. That's why in America we call them number 10 envelopes. Those are meant for an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper to be folded in thirds, and it fits inside there just right. Um, so the key is if you do get stationary, if you decide to do the upgrade, make sure that you're getting a card for which there is a matching envelope. I'm not going to go to the details of where addresses go on the envelopes and so on. Um, uh, that's uh, th There are rules about that, but we don't have time. This is not a stationary cast. So I, so I should stop using those distribution envelopes with the kind of the holes in the, <laughs> yeah, on nice. the side with the, or with the, the special label orange on. ones. Yeah, yeah, with a little red tie on the back. Yeah. Um, look, if you send me a note written on that, buddy, I will read it and it will warm my heart. Um, and then please do, and then I can kid you about it for 15 years on air to tens of thousands of people. <laughs> I thought you were saying then you'd fire me as your partner. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, okay, so I'm sorry. i just in one of those moods, I guess. Well, that's um, okay. General guidelines. Okay. We've got a few general guidelines. Um, one only says thank you twice in the thank you note. We'll talk about it more in the content section, but basically many folks mistakenly believe they should just say thank you over and over again. Thank you for the great time I had last night. Thank you again for the wonderful steak you made. Uh, thank you for inviting me and my spouse to your home. It was a wonderful experience. It's not effective. Uh, uh, historically, etiquette suggests that you only say thank you once in the very beginning, and the rest is just personalization. I have found, after coaching hundreds of people to do this, they simply are unable to avoid saying, again, thanks, uh, and so I allow people to do it, I suggest people go ahead and do it, and somehow that makes them feel better uh, at the start of the third paragraph. So only say thank you twice. But once would be fine if, if it just yeah. floated. Kind of it. Yes, exactly. Once, okay. Exactly. Yes, one is great, but but no more than twice. Otherwise, and by the way, the word appreciation and gratitude, that's thank you. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, so you don't say thank you and then say I, I, I have great gratitude and then I uh, really uh, appreciate. Um, that's thank you again and again and again. That's just you might as well just stand on the street corner below their house and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, extra, extra, extra. Read all about it. Okay. Number two. Okay. Um, one never asks a question or requests a favor. 
This happens to me all the time, and it completely ruins the thank you note. Somebody sends me a resume and then tells me a sob story. I'm like, okay, I'll do it this time. Uh, and then and then they send a thank you note and say, hey, by the way, what do you think of the new resume? And they've got to fold it up inside there. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh, it's fold up inside the card. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 <laughs> um, I, 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 I don't know why people do it. It doesn't matter why. I, actually, I think it's because if someone it, – it's becoming rarer and rarer or more rare. Sorry. It's becoming more and more rare for people to um, to do favors for, for folks, it seems like. Our, 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 our discourse has become more coarse, so to speak. And, uh, and so someone who is willing to do a favor is perceived as – an open purse, if you will, an easy mark. Um, yeah, but, but but after you're saying thank you to somebody, to, to end it by creating some obligation on the yeah. recipient's end, just, oh. Yeah, particularly somebody who's already done a favor, because if you feel like, if they feel obligated, they're going to try to do something about it, and it just completely negates it. Um, uh, it just completely takes away the joy they feel for saying thank. I mean, I, um, you know, Napoleon said, uh, um, you know the things a, a man will do for a bit of colored ribbon. Um, well, the the things some of us will do just for a thank you note. Just please, just say thank you. That's all I ask. Okay, number three. It's never too late, and I'm serious about this. Never. That would be to the end of time, <laughs> till the universe collapses into a single point of unity. Okay, never. Weeks, months, years, never. If you remember it, simply add a sentence to your first paragraph saying, I know this is long overdue, but I wanted you to know I think of uh, this experience often, period. Or I think of your gift often. Or I think of the time we spent together often. Yeah. Simple. Okay. Very simple. Very simple. You, you, you're never off the hook. You owe thank you notes to people for things you did in the fourth grade. <laughs> that yeah, obligation is never too. removed. That obligation is never removed. It's a reminder, in high ed, there's a joke in the etiquette uh, circles among gentlemen and ladies, which is uh, a dinner obligation is such a sacred uh, uh, trust that we're one to be murdered beforehand. Uh, one's executioner must attend in one's stead. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're you're uh, the executor of your will. Your executor of your estate will be required to send all the thank you notes that you owe someone. <laughs> wow. Well, my my executor is going to be um, uh, busy. Pretty busy. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, been, well, part of that is because we benefited enormously from other people helping us throughout our lives. So we have a lot of people to thank. Uh, number four, handwritten really is best, even if your handwriting is not wonderful. Um, Typing does take away some of the sentiment you're trying to convey. It's okay to type it, but handwriting is better. And if that means you have to slow down a little bit and you cross through a couple because it's ugly, uh, because you've gotten used to writing chicken scratch at work, and many many of us have, um, do it again and go slower. People appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and not, and, and I got one in pencil once. Um, not in pencil, pen, please. Yeah. Better than nothing, but yeah, yeah, yeah it's better than nothing. Right, right. So that's it. Th th those are our four general guidelines. And now, can we get to content, which is what everybody's here yeah. for? Sure. Yeah, okay, let's good. go. Um, first of all, three paragraphs. We recommend this to avoid long letters. My gosh, I've gotten some masterful ones, four or five pages, like or yeah, on the like long podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice, nice. I'll talk <laughs> fast. I'll talk fast. Um, or terribly short notes. Um, while any thank you note is, you know, better than none at all, save one with lots of questions and issues unrelated to appreciation, I guess. Um, the worst one I ever got was one sentence. Thank you for what you did for me. And of course I couldn't read the person's handwriting on the small little note. So I literally did not know who had sent that to me. You know, um, you know most of our listeners are probably going, there's no behavior there. That's not good feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but please, let's let's be clear. This is not feedback. We're not trying to get this person to do more of it. We're expressing genuine human joy at one's will, someone else's willingness to help us. That's all. Um, it's not feedback. But you're right. There is no behavior there. <laughs> um, three paragraphs. Most people are terrible at segregating their ideas into sentences, let alone paragraphs. So we use paragraphs as the construct. It allows each idea you're going to present to really stand on its own. Shorter sentences and paragraphs, when communicating something so basic as appreciation, are always better. Okay? So let's get to the paragraphs. Paragraph one is one sentence long in which you say thank you specifically. 
literally, I, I just want to make this clear, one sentence. A one sentence paragraph is absolutely unambiguous about its meaning and intent. You are saying thank you. Okay. And the way one says thank you is to, well, actually say the words thank you. Okay. You do not say I'm writing to. That's redundant. They know that you're writing. Um, <laughs> you actually say thank you for. You do not say I'd like to say thank you or I would like to thank you for, because you're not actually liking it, you are actually doing it. You're saying thank you for, okay? Unless, but, of course, you're thanking them and you're really not liking it, but we'll just yeah. just leave that off. Oh my gosh, yeah. You're, you're on fine form tonight, sir. Um, some first sentence examples. Thank you for taking the time to interview me earlier today, period. Thank you for your generous gift of the book Visioneering, period. Thank you for arranging my travel so flawlessly over the past 15 years, period. Thank you for hosting me for dinner last night, period. And for those of our international listeners, that word period, I'm just putting period. That's the end of the sentence. It's not an actual word in the sentence, okay? It's that simple. Okay? Okay. So the paragraph one's pretty easy. How about paragraph two? Yeah. Two sentences. Double the trouble, okay? <laughs> and the purpose of this paragraph is to personalize the note. Two sentences that make it so that there's no way the recipient would feel they're getting a templatized, standardized, you could write this to anybody kind of note. Your sentiment yeah, that should would be bad. Yeah. Your sentiment should be specific to you, to them, and to the gift, whatever it might have been that they provided. And remember, I use the word gift not in physical sense, but in terms of an extension of themselves on your behalf. For instance, the time you've spent on my behalf made my travel life so much easier. I'll always remember getting a limo from Savannah to Atlanta to make that speech in Sioux Falls. True story, actually. Uh, I really enjoy discussing the firm's plans for China. It's clear that we're going places, and I'm lucky to be involved. The steak was great. The company was even better, and I felt right at home. Note here that we avoid commas. If you've got a comma in a sentence... It's likely you could make it into two sentences, and it would work even better. So if you find yourself with a long sentence with a comma and an and in the middle of it, and you don't know how to get a second sentence out of your paragraph, you already have the second sentence. It's after the comma and after the and. <laughs> Put a, change the comma for a period, look at your verbiage, and you could probably change a word or two around, and then you have two sentences, and you're done. Paragraph three s simply restates your appreciation. The best thing here is one sentence. And let's be clear. That means you can write a thank you note in four sentences that is specific, clear, heartfelt, warm, and effective. Uh, so the best thing is one sentence and, and, and wishing them well. And it sounds like this. Again, you have my thanks and best wishes. Or I appreciate everything and look forward to many more years of working together with you. Or, I'm in your debt, and I look forward to returning the favor. That's it. Yeah, pretty brief. I, that, that's, um, I think for some people, it'll be good to remember that, because I think people sometimes make it out to be a much larger chore than it is, and they just don't yeah. do it. So. Yeah, exactly. And then point five, I want to mention, uh, you can do better than this. Look, we're giving you a formula. It works. It works all the time. When I have 20 to write, I use this formula. Okay? It takes away your excuse for not knowing what to say or how to write it or what's too short or too long. But look, the ones that follow the template are not going to be the best thank you notes you'll ever write. Um, once you use this to get started, you'll become better over time. As you practice, allow the notes to gradually become more an expression of yourself as long as that helps you express your appreciation. You don't want to express yourself at the expense of your appreciation. The purpose of the note is to express appreciation, not to express yourself. At some point in your life, you might choose to say to a close friend, Michael, your recent gift meant a great deal to me. I'm not much for the things of this world, but books are my one exception. Both of the books you have made an impact on me already. Every time I read your kind inscriptions, I will be reminded of your friendship, which helps me feel that I have lived a life of integrity. When people like you choose to associate with me, I know I'm on God's path for me with this life. With respect, Mark. You could write one like that. As long as you, you may have already. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you understand the purpose of one and you've written thousands of them following the template, then you feel more comfortable about knowing how to express yourself accurately and succinctly, ultimately, 
to show appreciation for someone who did something for you. And that's it. Start with a formula, some store-bought cards, and as time and income and your job permit, make your thank you notes more ones that people will treasure. Although, as we've said before, Mike and I treasure ones that are store-bought and are four sentences long in three paragraphs. You and the person who receives your cards and your career will be better for it. Period. Wow. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. So, quick overview again. Materials. Store-bought is okay. No excuse there. Go out and get some. Um, an upgrade is well worth it. We definitely feel that's a good thing. Um, but it's not a reason not to do it. General guidelines are you say thank you only twice. You never ask a question or request a favor. It is never too late to the end of time. Uh, and handwritten is still best. Uh, and if you have to write it twice, so be it. Um, and then as far as content, three paragraphs. One sentence for paragraph one in which you say thank you specifically. Paragraph two is two sentences which personalize the note. And paragraph three restates your appreciation. And remember, over time, you will get better as long as you write a lot of thank you notes, which is generally would make the world a better place. Why shouldn't we do it for that reason alone? That's it. This is great. I, I, I love this because, uh, matter of fact, as soon as I get home from my trip here, I think I'll sit down and write a few thank you notes that I've uh, delayed on just way too long. Yeah. I know the feeling. We'll see you later. Thanks, partner. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. Thank you notes in under 30 minutes. Now, after listening to this, how about sitting down and going and writing that note you've been thinking about for the past 60 days? We'll see you all next week. So long.